Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my job shop. Welcome to my channel. My name is Keith and I'm your host. Today we have, uh, we're just doing a little heat treating. We might be doing a few other things here, but we're leading off with some heat treating. Uh, so I'm getting ready to fire up uh, my hot shot oven here. And I have <clears throat> a couple other, uh, I have the duplex over there as well. I want to shout out and give a thanks to Stan at Barzy uh, uh, Industrial and also Chris from American uh, Rotary. Uh, thank you guys. <clears throat> now, I'm going to be getting into more of using my ovens for a lot of different uses and stuff. But today we're going to go ahead and we're going to heat treat a couple little shafts here. Here's a, a view of the broken shaft here. And you can see that it's held in between my adjustable C-clamp. I mean, <laughs> my digital calipers. And you can see that it has a twisted section in the middle of it. And the left side of that twist is where it actually separated. And the right side was just about uh, a failure area. And that was closest to where the, the splines on the small spline hub were making contact into it. Um, this little shaft is not attainable by the manufacturer they want to sell you the complete three-stage pump assembly and not just the shaft so <clears throat> my landlord asked me to go ahead and make one and make a spare so i went ahead and purchased some obtainium aka 4140 and uh yesterday and a little bit before uh, day before it, i machined the, the blanks but i did most of the the cutting there yesterday and today we're finishing them up after a test fit this morning we we verified our a good fit on the uh, major spline there as well so we're going to be putting them in the oven here and uh, we're going to finish them up this is a view of our two splines that we're going to heat treat standing next to the original before we put them in the oven All right, I think we're started. All right, while we're waiting for our heat treat, we can get a few things done. We're, we're working on the pedestals and the drip tray for Pearl, trying to get them ready. And I'm through the, the cleaning stage, and this is the first layer of rusty metal primer. Rusty metal primer is my choice of painting on any of my rebuild on my machining um, it's a good bond I've even painted the inside of gearboxes and just left it the plain uh, rust-oleum uh, product inside the gearbox like on the K&T even even the gearboxes being opened up and looking in or do a repair or you know fix something or inspect anything I have seen the interior just as brilliant as the day I put it together and it holds up good another reason why I like this primer is it's thick you can just slop it on um, and I'm gonna bring you in close to because I'm just I just got 100 grit paper on here and all I'm doing is gliding over and remember this is this is pretty old 1941 I've needle gunned through a lot of layers, including some layers of the original um, filler that they used on castings is kind of popped away in a few areas. So there's highs and lows on this here. So <clears throat> instead of the finished paint job looking pretty wrinkly or bumpy, I've been uh, making an effort to smooth it out somewhat. And it does pretty good. I mean, it, um, when we did Buffy, we actually added a little bit of uh, Bondo because some of the areas pretty well needed some Bondo in there. But the characteristics of Pearl here, um, 
are pretty good. I'm not I'm not really gonna worry about making it uh, hood ornament you know smooth um, so I want a certain amount of smoothness on it because it helps wiping the oils and everything else off cleaning your machine as it goes and I know <laughs> and I'm looking right over at my closet and past the camera here and I see the two pedestals underneath there and I have actually cleaned that lathe to where I actually got down and I cleaned those pedestals twice, okay? Once when it moved in uh, over there at uh, 791 Main Street when I was over there. And then once when I moved it over here, I think I cleaned those pedestals underneath the lathe. So these things, this is, this is a chance for me to, to make them easy wipe. And, uh, and then hopefully they get wiped and cleaned more than twice in their lifetime with my life the rest of my lifetime anyway all right i'm i'm rolling this so i can work sit here comfortably and work this this flat side here while it's up and and i got good light on it and then i just roll this corners now you can see the darkness coming between the the, the red primer okay you see some of the green so we were talking about uh rolling over the corners and and working the flat side up here so that I can actually see because I want to see the highs and lows. I'm looking for the the color. A anytime that you see this color here in between there, that's a deep hole where the sand is not getting to. And then this kind of color here is actually the the black material that was made to coat uh, the casting to make it smooth. So you kind of play in between that surface and here and in between you might hit a couple areas like the green paint or any of the paints that were on the outside they that were are still have survived the pressure washing the needle gunning and all of that so we're going to leave that joint in there because we're certain that everything that's on here now is going to stay connected to the lathe or the component of the lathe all right so <clears throat> We're just running back and forth. You can see more of the green right in here. Okay. We're not we're not pushing it down to like bring it back down to any bare metal, but there is bare metal there where we touch. So you know we're not going to worry about the little slope that's in there we just want it to be kind of smooth in between all of there there's a couple little you'll see those are all lows and the next coat of uh, primer is going to bring up that some more i get it if i get half of those out of there i'm going to be pretty happy it'll still by the time we get a couple coats of the smoke gray over the top of this it is going to be glossy smooth wipeable surface and that's what i'm looking for in pearl's finish here and we have decided on the smoke gray is going to be the color over you think we need an indicator <laughs> all right there's a score starts very lightly right here and increases in intensity as it spirals around until it gets right down here to the the strut okay took a lot of impact right there all right now we're good but i'm going to show you how i'm going to straighten this one out with my tape measure okay i'm going to order a eight foot one half inch that's how we do that okay here's something that you don't see every day and this is a hercules water pump and this dates back to when uh, uh, Hubber was making tractors and I believe this motor came out of a tractor I believe that's what he said uh, this is a spare housing but I'm we're working on the best of what he has there but we marked this spare so this has actually got some spare features in it um, because if anything snaps or breaks on that one there we can see if we can salvage it off of here 
Now, as gear that this drives off of, I've, I see some heavy rollover burrs and stuff like that. I'll take a look at that a little bit later. But this gear, actually, once sandblasting, cleaned up, and stoned, might be actually better than the gear that's on here. But other than that, we're going to continue trying to take this apart. We heated this up, put on this clamshell puller. We're just barely underneath the teeth of that impeller there. We don't want to exceed too much force because we don't want to break that because we, you know, we only have two of them, one on this one and one on the spare. Now, the other part of this pump has got a, has got a bushing in here and this goes right over the end of the pump there and we're going to have to rework that bushing as well. Now, this shaft here is severely worn. Actually, that's probably uh, 20 or 30 thousandths under the nominal diameter. You can actually almost see a shoulder against that three-quarter. This is three-quarter nominal until it gets down to this, this diameter down in here. Now that I know that, and I've given my effort to get this off of here, I can't just push it through the housing because it has a woodruff key in it. And if you've ever pushed a woodruff key and shaft through something, you know you pretty well destroyed it when you're done. So I also look in between the impeller and the housing and I believe I can get a hacksaw on there. So I'm going to take a hacksaw and I'm going to cut that shaft right off because I know I can press that shaft out of there once I'm supporting in on the closer part of the hub in here. So I think that's my game plan. All right, that kind of gives you an idea how that end bell or the pump body fits on there. All right, and we know that that bushing and everything else is wasted in there as we talked. All right, I have in play in here, so I'm going to take a wedge and I'm just going to hold that spread a little bit. I'm going to put it in a vise and I'm going to cut that off with a hacksaw. All right, we got a machinist wedge here and we're just going to put it underneath here. That's holding pretty good. I have another rubber mat down here just in case I don't happen to catch this, but I, I should be able to catch that as we're hacksawing because when you get close to the end of a cut, you kind of start seeing things fall off. All right. Feels like I got enough room in there. I wouldn't, I'm not bound up. Take a look. I'm about halfway through. I got about an eighth of an inch left. Getting thin. My wedge is getting loose on the bottom there. Okay. There we go. Uh, li Linux. All right. It's the only blade I use. Okay, it's actually. It, it looks like it came down. It's got a little clearance in here. So it looks like I'm on my way of getting this thing taken apart. A lot of little rust in that area right there. Probably some packing even squeezed down through there. Now I can press that off. So I just wanted to get to this part in my head uh, today. And it doesn't look like I damaged that or that.
we use this uh, because it actually gingerly lets us open it so that we don't rock or tip over our parts. All right, we're gonna let those cool off in there. I use this really, really old pair of channel locks because they have no teeth, so to speak, but they uh, they got that feel, it's pretty good size. All right, she's cooling down now. Okay, our oven's still cooling down, but I've already taken the wire brush and brushed all the mill scale off of our um, two parts that we just brought out of the oil there and clean them up um, now they're matching in color for after being heat treated uh, you always get that darker coloring on them and I um, think they're gonna be ready to go um, anyhow there's the three amigos right <laughs> okay there's a little heat treating and a couple other jobs that's going on in the shop here today Anyhow, until next time, get her done. Mm -hmm.